boom, 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 boom. Lo ves, necesitas palos rotos para hacer los opuestos en el tetraedro. Tienen que estar rotos porque hacen intersecciones. ¿Todo el mundo ve esto? Necesitas un palo roto para moverte entre medias de los otros palos para generar la opuesta y polar estructura que está dado por el código en sí mismo. ¿No es eso dulce? Tomas el código, aunque todavía no he podido terminar toda la animación de estos tetraedros. Si continúas haciendo esto y sigues el código, harás la matriz completa de los 64 tetraedros. Después que haces el código de los 64, cada uno haciendo un tetraedro, habrás hecho la matriz de los 512, que es el lugar fractal próximo después de 64. Por lo tanto, si, si sigues el código de Li Ching, hay triagramas que son 8, primero y después los 64 hexagramas, correcto, y generas los 512, por lo tanto, sigues la progresión exacta de la vida de la mitosis. So let's see. Uh, I was playing with the five spiral because um, you know I was doing some uh, interesting math. I, I found some very interesting uh, as a result of an interaction with a friend of mine. I found some interesting function to the five spiral that um, I never seen anywhere else. Now I might be missing something, but uh, I found that. Uh, the phi spiral behaves in a way where it generates boundaries, condition, a very specific radius from each other if you, if you array uh, the, the spiral in an appropriate way. Okay, so I was, I was uh, building a phi spiral, building it using, you know, phi relationship by segments. And at one point, uh, when my, my spiral was approximately here, I just continued to add segments without changing their relationship to each other. Meaning, I continued to add segments to my spiral, but instead of increasing my segment length 1.618 every time, I just kept the same ratio. And within a few segments, uh, I had a perfect circle coming back, right? And that circle, um, you know, um, uh, encompasses the spiral dynamic, but interestingly, the spiral is not in the middle of the circle. And I thought that was interesting because when we plot uh, orbitals of particles falling into a black hole, we usually plot them on a geodesic in which the center of the spiral is the center of the black hole, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't naturally do this if you're doing it geometrically. 
So I thought that was interesting. But I was playing with this and Andre looks at me and goes, hey, that's not in the middle. And I'm like, yeah, no, it doesn't fall in the middle. I'm trying to figure out what the ratio that is. And it's Marco run. And uh, he said, wait a minute, do a Marco, you know, crazy geometry trick. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, okay. Um, uh, with the uh, with, with, with the CAD program, I was able to reproduce it, and uh, sure enough, turns out that the spiral uh, vortices uh, intersect exactly where um, your what you call your emanation point right. is, which is not in the middle of the sphere, neither. And when you look closely at the spiral, see. But it never intersects that point. The point actually is probably is more precise than the spiral. Uh, the spiral is trying to get to that point. And it'll never get there. You see, when we look at the path of a particle going into a back hole, we keep doing this. We only look at one particle, like there would be only one particle falling into the black hole. But that's not the case at all. There's thousands and thousands of particles falling into the black hole. And this is only the path of one particle. So what happens if I multiply, multiply this path, let's say, by uh, 12 elements? So now we've got 12 uh, particles falling into the black hole. If you actually multiply the spirals, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. so, that, so that you don't just have the path of one particle falling into a black hole, but you got a whole bunch of particles falling into a black hole. Coming in randomly? Well, not random. Not random, at, at equidistance, or, you know, if you take, instead of taking the path, the math of one, only one particle falling in. Well, let's say you have 12, or and they're at equidistance. You've got to put them at some starting point. Oh, these boundaries. Right. These boundaries just appear right out of the five spirals. Which are more halving. Yeah, because the, the spirals actually touch, and then gets wider, and touch again, together, and creates boundary conditions, like rings. Like fractal rings. Yeah, they interfere with each other and they go wrong.